All right, good morning. Committee on Parole, we are now at Lafayette Parish Correctional Center on Tuesday, June the 6th, 2023. Um, I would like for the officer in the room, please identify yourself for the record, please. Deputy Bedell. All right, thank you so much for accommodating us this morning. And uh, with the offender, please introduce yourself for the record. Name and DOC number. Yeah, my name is Quinn Senegal, 494813. All right, Mr. Senegal, my name is Cheryl Renanza. To my left is Mrs. Bonnie, I mean, excuse me, Mrs. Carl Wallace. To my right is Mrs. Bonnie Jackson. Mr. Senegal, is that a parole revocation questionnaire there in front of you? Yes, ma'am. Is that your signature at the bottom of that page dated May the 9th of this year? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Okay. So um, you're ready to proceed this morning without counsel? Yes, ma'am. Uh, let me acknowledge we have your fiance, Ms. Kimberly Johnson, here with us. She's indicated she'd like to speak on your behalf, and we'll ask her to do so at the appropriate time. Yes, First, I will read the allegations against you, the allegations that you violated the conditions of your parole. You'll enter a plea of guilty or not guilty, and then we'll have a conversation there. Okay. So, so you're accused of violating condition number four. That states on September 13, 2022, you were arrested on the criminal conduct of simple burglary and domestic abuse battery child endangerment. You were billed on the charges of home invasion, domestic abuse battery, child present, and simple robbery. On 11, 23, you were sentenced to first offense domestic abuse battery and you were placed on two years misdemeanor supervised probation. Charges of simple robbery and home invasion were dismissed. How do you plead to violating condition number four? Well, I took the plea. I took that plea, ma'am. And this is your conditions of parole. So, how do you plead guilty or not guilty to violating condition number four of the oh, parole? Not guilty. You said not guilty. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then the other the other one is condition number 10. You're in arrears $3,169 for your parole fees with the last payment made January 11th, 2021. So how do you plead violating condition number 10? Guilty. The case this morning has been assigned to Mrs. Jackson. Would you answer her questions? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Mrs. Senegal. How are you? Good morning, Mrs. Jackson. All right, fine. Uh, Mr. Senegal, I've reviewed your file. I've looked some information, I'll call it, that was submitted on your behalf as uh, somehow an indication uh, this did not happen. Uh, however, uh, you went to court and you pled guilty. Why did you plead guilty? Because I, uh, I really was trying to get home quicker because I didn't like my next my next I've been in here since uh like September and my next court date was in um August and that was like 90 days and I just really took the chance on going to my hearing instead of just sitting you know and because I was just sitting for nothing that's really why why I took the plea you do acknowledge that you pled guilty to domestic abuse battery and you got two years of misdemeanor probation and the simple robbery and the home invasion was dismissed. So tell us what happened. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. So tell us what happened. Oh uh, well, honestly, I didn't I didn't know I had these charges till the day I got locked up. Yeah, from, but it was the charges was filed away like August, from what I understand. What and, happened in August? Oh uh, well, it was me and well my my uh baby mom, she had she was messing with this guy, and the guy called her phone, and I basically was just, I just told her like you know look this guy I say look your little boo calling you, and she basically got mad at me because so I didn't. She, I guess she was looking for me to get mad because the guy called her phone, but she got mad at me and started, you know, flashing on me and stuff. And when I, when I went to get my uh, clothes out, 
out the um uh, out the closet and I was going to my um house back to my house and to my my address in church for him. She jumped on me and like trying to grab my clothes. And when she jumped on my back, I was trying to like shear her from grabbing my clothes. And she and that's when I smashed my finger in the door. And when the impact from me smashing my door, I jumped back. I mean smashing my finger. I jumped back and she fell off my back. And that's whenever she uh she had, had a, a cut on her elbow from what I found out after I got locked up. And that's really what happened, you know. But I found out she had press charges on me and all that. That would have been on August the 22nd. That Man, sounds no. like this incident you're describing would have been on August 22nd of last year. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I have a police report uh, from that date. Uh, they uh, were contacted by Skylar Thomas that the, she had been abused by her child's father. Uh, she lived at a um, residence, however, she left the front door unlocked because her oldest child was outside playing with the neighborhood children. She was on the second floor of the residence in the bathtub with her daughter, Truly. And, uh, Thomas stated that um, you grabbed, that you entered the residence, went upstairs, grabbed your cell phone off the bathroom counter before grabbing her by the hair and pulling her out of the bathtub. And then she stated that uh, you then uh, pulled her down the apartment stairs, then outside to the parking lot. She stated that you struck her in the head multiple times before leaving her cell phones with her cell phone still in your possession. Uh, the, the son was still present and said that he, he was a witness. He said that um, he had heard arguing and then you pulled uh, Skylar down the stairs by holding onto her hair, up the head. And then he saw you leave in a green truck. And it says that she sustained a laceration on her left arm near the elbow that was still bleeding, had a large broken toenail that covered on the second floor of her apartment near the stairs, which corroborated her statement about being dragged down the stairs. And then in the bathroom, they said that there was nothing in disarray. Water was found on the floor and that corroborated Ms. Thomas being pulled out of the bathroom. So let's, let's talk about that. Ms. Uh, Jackson, uh, I promise, like that, that is like those allegations are completely false, uh, like without a doubt. And like her, the little boy, she talking about that they said did that. That look, he ain't nothing but like five years old, four years old. So how you get conduct and say a statement like that? And his birthday, let's see. He was actually seven. Seven, all right, seven. And um seven year old, a seven year old can see and and, and report what they see. Seven year old. Go ahead. And uh yeah, the um but the like it's the like you I was saying the about the getting pulled out the the uh, shower and all that 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 is not true, you know. And Skylar Lake, like, I can't I can't really put the words on it. Like she she she's a compulsive liar by far. Like and if anyone knows me, like that I've been with that girl since '98, 25 years, and I never put my hands on her, you know. And that was the whole reason, you know. Like I say, I I really. I put myself in that position by allowing, by go, by dealing with another woman. You know, yeah, yeah, she lied, but I did that. I called it by dealing with another woman. You know, like I stated on my letter. You know, it, 
you know, just how I refrain from putting myself in situations and not getting in trouble. You know, the people at home I with and the places I once was, I was supposed to use that same manner, you know, and see things for it happen, even though she said what she said, you know, and I, I hold myself accountable for allowing all that to happen. And she did um, a request that the charges um, be dismissed. The statement I wrote for the police wasn't right. Quentin and I did get into a fuss, but he didn't put his hands on me. I ran outside, fell on the cement, and scrapped, scraped my arm. She says you were together for three and a half years. Um, And uh, stole your virtues as a father. He raised my son like his own little girl. Hey, I'm not afraid of him in no type of way. And would like to see him home with all of his kids and family. And that was um, signed on December 20th of this year. Well, let me ask you this. When, when you were in court on the charges, did she come to court and, and tell that to um, the prosecutor? Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, she didn't come to court, the prosecutor. I went to, before I went to court twice, they brought me to like, they brought, I went to court like five times for that, even after she did that. The pro, the, um, the DA, you know, wasn't trying to, dismiss it or do nothing. He 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 wanted to charge me, you know. He wasn't this this actually my first I time. I understand, but on your trial date, if she come to court and said, I want to testify, you know, this didn't happen, but she didn't come forward. No ma'am, she told the DA that she didn't that she didn't want to she wasn't coming to court and she didn't want to pursue the charges. And how long have you been incarcerated since um, September of 22, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Well, let's talk about your supervision fees. You were way behind in your supervision fees. Why is that? Uh, I have no excuse. I, I was supposed to do better, but that situation right there with dealing with my baby mom, I was had so much going on and wasn't focusing about it, I'll be honest with that. But I, I should have been doing better than I could have. And so why weren't you? Ma'am? Why weren't you? Because even before that you got arrested, you were already behind $3,000 in your supervision fees. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I know that uh, I, have, I, I, don't have no, I have no excuse, but I mean, I will... I mean, if granted my freedom, I'll, I'll be, without a doubt, I'll catch up on that. I'll, I'll, you know, I promise about that. Were you employed? Yes, ma'am. I just had, like, whenever um, I came, the day I got locked up, I was coming from, I just, I was coming from my job with what, a lot well, of time. Ma'am? What kind of job did you have? You I was, at the time, I was working at um in the industrial plant in Lake Charles at uh at um Sasson. Doing what? Uh, doing scaffolding. And uh, how long had you been there? Since since I actually since I came home, I would I've been in and out. I would go from offshore after I got my certifications offshore. I went from offshore to. To uh, industry, to the uh, plants. It all depends, whichever one you know. Yeah. Well, how much were you making? Uh, like an hour. How much were you paying an hour on this job? Like uh, twenty six dollars. And you couldn't manage to squeeze out your your um supervision fees. Yeah, I should have. I should have. I, I should have been doing better with that. That's, that's my fault on that. Mr. Johnson, that's all I have. Okay, um, can we hear from Miss Kimberly Johnson, please? Yes, ma'am. 
Sit right. up straight, Miss Johnson. Not get out of the bed. Sit up straight. This is a formal proceeding. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Kimberly Johnson. And I'm the fiance of Quentin Senegal for 25 years. Anything you want to tell us about him? Um, I would just like to for you to take everything into consideration and um pardon him or grant him his the clemency because he was just really at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person. I mean, we've been through a lot of things and we had a lot of altercations and that never once happened. Like he wasn't raised to like hit a woman or do anything like that. And that never happened. And I'm, you know, a little firecracker. And he never, ever put his hands on me. Never. Like the type of person that he was dealing with, you have to understand, like being that he was with me for 25 years is like, oh, I can't remove, you know, remove her. So I can't take her out of the picture. So I'm gonna take him out of the picture. Like I'm gonna send him away. So lying and saying that was like the easiest thing to do. And being that he was on parole, it was like, it's an easy, you know, easy way to get rid of him. So if I can't have him, she can't have him, which right. I mean, it, well, it's crazy. But it's, talk about that, Ms. Johnson. Yeah, you, that's your relationship. Uh, let me ask Mr. Senegal, is there anything you'd like to say to us before we vote? Ma'am, uh, yeah, um, I, I mean, I deeply consider it how uh, y'all would let me get grab my parole because I, my freedom, because I honestly have like a lot of things that ahead of me that I was trying, that I'm accomplishing, you know, I had to set back, which is, I'm, I'm trying to, well, I'm going uh, further myself and get my high school diploma so I can further myself in theology and this Bible Institute college is like four or five years. And I have this, my CDL class in August the 4th, where I'm trying to enroll in. And we have our wedding plan that me and, my, me and her plan and, and, and the youth football team that I'll be coaching. I missed out on that last year, you know, and I don't, I don't want to just, you know, look this lose out on all that. I mean, I know I'm going to go home, but I mean, I, I'm really trying to pursue that and, you know, take care of that and stuff and make, you know, Fix this situation I'm, that I'm in. Thank you, Mr. Senegal. Prepare to vote. Let me ask you a question. I'm not even going to try to get into your complicated personal life because I, I don't understand, you know, uh, this entanglement. But when you pled guilty to that domestic abuse battery, were you ordered to go to a domestic violence program? Yes, ma'am. I gotta. They told me I had to go to uh some some like some community service and all kind of other things. Did they specifically tell you to do a domestic violence program? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Senegal. I do find that you violated the alleged. Uh, violations against you, the criminal conduct and the behind in your supervision fees. So my vote today is going to be to not revoke the current use of supervision and order that you complete a 26 domestic violence offender program and become current with your supervision fees. My vote. This is why uh, <clears throat> Quentin, I uh I really am concerned about you. I, I really am. Uh, and we have to get to a place where we do things that's healthy for us in our life. And you're not there. Yes, uh, I, I, I concur with my colleague. My vote is to say that do not revoke and return you to supervision because of the testimony that's been uh, rendered here today. But I want you to undergo a mental health evaluation and follow that recommendation. Yes, ma'am. I also want you to not have no contact with this community until you have completed that, that, that domestic uh, violence class that Ms. Jackson mentioned. I know y'all have a child together. Y'all can work that out. 
Somebody go pick them up and all that. No contact for your parole condition. No contact means when she calls you and she's probably going to call you, you don't answer. When she sends texts, you don't respond. Unless you say, I'm on parole and I'm not allowed to talk. That should be your response. Until you finish that domestic battery class. That's my condition. Best wishes to you. All right, Mr. Senegal, and I do concur with my colleagues. My vote is the same with the same conditions. Do not revoke or return you to supervision. You understand the conditions that have been explained to you? Yes, ma'am. Good luck to you, sir. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all sincerely.